Okay, so welcome to the lesson on the urinary system, also known as an excretory system. So first of all, we're going to look at the structures that are contained within this system. And we're going to look at the process that these structures go through in order for the excretory part of that system to function. And also um, how that affects fluid levels within the body generally. Um, and then lastly, have a look at how our treatments can be influenced or influence the urinary system. So first of all, the structures of the urinary system. The first two structures are ones that we're all very familiar with and they are the kidneys. We have two kidneys. They are bean shape structures, hence the term kidney bean. And they are situated sort of at waistline and they're either side of the spine. So they're more towards the back, which is why if there's any issues with kidneys, kidney infections, um, it's often um, seen as a backache to begin with. So two kidneys situated at waistline, either side of the spine. Those two kidneys have two tubes that branch off and come together. Those two tubes are called our ureters. U-R-E-T-E-R, -E -E ureter, and there's two of them. They lead from each kidney and they lead into one structure, the bladder. And then from the bladder, we have one tube called the urethra, U-R-E-T-H-R-A, which is the exit tube. So where fluid is released from the body. All those structures are the same in both male and female. Other than the urethra, which on a female is much shorter than a male. So the urethra, which branches from the bladder and exits out of the body, is much shorter on a female and longer on a male. And that's why urine infections are much more common in females because the urethra is shorter. And so the ability for bacteria to get up and into the urinary system is much easier than it is on a male urethra because it's got longer. So the idea is that the infection would probably be killed before it gets up into the other structures. So everything's the same other than a female urethra is shorter. Also, as an offshoot, a female urethra only releases one fluid in urine, but a male urethra has a dual action in that it can release urine and semen. So that's another change, but obviously that's genitourinary as well. So quick overview of what those structures do. So our kidneys are to do with filtration. And we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail. So kidneys main function is filtration. The ureters you just want to think about as a bit of a transportation system from the kidneys to the bladder. So it's just a way of getting the fluid that is left over from the filtration process from the kidneys to the bladder. Bladder you want to think of as a storage unit. So it's got an elasticated ability to it, so it can expand and release. Um, so it will store a substance for then that to exit the body through the urethra. So again, the urethra is just a tube for transportation of urine out of the body. 
And then we want to think about when that, so all of that process of the fluid moving from the kidneys down into the bladder, from the bladder down the urethra, again, that's all that visceral muscular tissue that we've talked about before. We're not thinking about having to move the fluid from there to there and do all of that business. But as soon as the urine is ready to exit the body, that um, ability for it to be released, that muscular action is voluntary. So it's a skeletal muscular action. So most of the time, that action is voluntary, unless you're doing star jumps <laughs> or you sneeze, I don't know. <laughs> but most of the time, it's a voluntary action. So we've got both visceral muscular tissue and skeletal muscular tissue. So four uh, structures, obviously there's two kidneys and two ure ureters. So process. So we have talked about blood circulation and how um, our oxygenated blood goes to the cells and then our deoxygenated blood comes away from the cells. And in that deoxygenated blood, we have got waste products. So cells, just from the metabolizing, they will create waste. And the blood picks up that waste and anything that the blood can't pick up, the lymphatic system deals with and that's sorted. But that waste that the blood has picked up, bar the carbon dioxide, because that's gone to the lungs, so the lungs sort that out, but all the other waste. So we've got things like uric acid, we've got urea, we've got um, hormones that are done and dusted, they need to then exit the body. But also drugs that you take, medication, that goes into the bloodstream, does what it needs to do, and then there'll be a leftover waste product of those drugs, and so that needs to exit the body. So we have the renal arteries, and they are bringing the, deox the blood to the kidneys for filtration. So the renal artery brings the blood to the kidneys. And this blood will contain the, the waste. So first part of the process, the renal arteries are constantly bringing blood to the kidneys. Now, when you research into inside the kidney, there's loads of different structures, but the main structure for you to be aware of is something called the nephrons. And that's with a pH. So N-E-P-H-R-O-N-S, the nephrons. And they are the structure within the kidneys responsible for filtering um, the blood. So the blood comes through and everything in the blood gets deposited into the nephron, everything. So all the nutrients that are in the blood as well. So glycogen, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and water. So the blood deposits all, everything, all of the good stuff, those things, and then all of the waste that we've just talked about. So we're going to have some waste that's called urea, U-R-E-A, uric acid, hormones, and drugs. So your urea and your uric acid are sort of byproducts of cellular metabolism. So the cells doing what they're doing, they will release a waste product as a result. So blood filters through into the nephron and it literally gives the nephron everything. So here's all of what I've got. Now, we don't really want to lose our glycogen and our amino acids and our vitamins and our minerals. They need to go back out and circulate the body. So when all of those substances are passed into the nephron, we call that filtration. So the nephron filters everything out of the blood. But then, like we say, we want those vitamins and minerals. We're not ready to get rid of those. So then something called reabsorption happens. So it feels like a long process for something um, which doesn't really make sense. One thing in the body that doesn't particularly make sense. So everything's filtered out 
And then all of the good things, the glycogen, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and some water is reabsorbed back into the blood and that blood goes off to the rest of the body to take those vitamins, minerals, etc., to where they need to be. And that goes off via the renal vein. So that process is called reabsorption. So now the nephron is left with all of the waste and some water. And that water, along with that waste, um, produces urine. So the next process is production. So the nephron produces urine using the water and those waste products that were not reabsorbed. And then finally, that urine is obviously sent through the through the ureters to the bladder. It's stored in the bladder, that signals to our brain. When the bladder starts to fill, we get a signal to the brain that the bladder is full and needs to be emptied. And then we are able to choose when that is emptied. We release that skeletal muscle and allow the bladder to empty through the urethra. So four parts to the process. Filtration, which happens in the nephrons. Just think, the blood gives everything to the nephron. So filtration, everything is filtered out. Then we're like, well, no, hang on a second. We don't want you to have the good stuff because that needs to go off and still be used in the body. So reabsorption, the second process happens. So the blood reabsorbs the good stuff and some water. That goes off, we forget about that now. It's gone off out of the kidney to go to the rest of the body. And what's left in that nephron produces urine. So water and the waste products formulates the urine, which is sent to the bladder. So production is your third function. Production of urine. And then excretion is your fourth process in that that urine is then sent to the bladder for storage and then released. So it seems like a slightly pointless exercise for everything to exit the blood, for things to go back into the blood. But obviously it can't be just some things and not other things. So we have a filtration and a reabsorption process. So very straightforward. The waste goes to the kidneys, it produces urine, which gets that waste out of our body. However, we have to think about our fluid levels. So um, our body needs a certain amount of fluid, of water that's circulating the body to keep it healthy and to keep the organs and, well, everything bathed with a certain amount of water. Remember, every cell is 70% water. So 70% of your body is made up of water. So it's important that our fluid levels are maintained. And we all know that we have some days where we drink plenty of water, and then we have other days where we don't drink as much water. So our body can't just keep more water on the day that we drank more, knowing that tomorrow's or Thursday, she doesn't plan to drink water on a Thursday. It has to constantly be balancing the fluid levels. So we have some structures in the brain that are able to sense when fluid levels might be low. And the brain is then able to inform the body to react to those fluid levels, to the changes in the fluid level. So the brain senses that fluid levels, we're gonna talk about are low, because that's the more sort of dangerous. So fluid levels are low. And the pituitary gland, so a hormone gland in the brain, don't worry too much, we'll talk about pituitary gland when we do endocrine, but it's a gland in the brain produces a hormone. That hormone is called ADH, antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone. You've probably heard of the word diuretic and you probably have linked it to producing or not producing more we, or making you we, diuretic but this is an anti-diuretic hormone. So the hormone is released from the pituitary gland in the brain 
and with hormones they are circulated via the blood and they circulate until they find their target organ again remember we're going to talk about this in the endocrine system so the adh is released from the brain and it circulates and it finds itself to the kidneys so the adh goes to the kidneys and that the presence of that hormone will indicate to the nephron that when that reabsorption is happening, more water is reabsorbed into the blood. So do you remember, everything was dropped off to the nephron. And then if there's plenty of water in the body, the nephron's going to keep that water to make more urine because the fluid levels are fine. But now I've drunk five cups of coffee and I've not had a glass of water since yesterday. Now suddenly my fluid levels are very low. So that ADH, that antidiuretic hormone, is going to tell the kidneys to not produce as much urine. We haven't got the water to release. We need the water back in our body. So everything filters into the nephron. And usually some water gets reabsorbed and some water stays behind to help create urine. Now we're going to reabsorb more of that water to keep the water in the body. So then what's going to happen to our urine? It's going to be much more concentrated. It's going to have far less water in it. So it's going to be a dark, concentrated and probably a not very nice aromad wee. And that's going to continue. So until the body is rehydrated, your urine is going to get more and more concentrated because it's got the waste products in it, but not the water to dilute it. If there's plenty of fluid in the body, that antidiuretic hormone isn't produced. And so when that uh, blood comes to the nephron, um, all of that excess water will be filtered. And so our urine is much lighter, paler. We produce more of it um, because we have got fluid levels are balanced. But when the fluid levels drop, we need to make sure that we withhold that water. So there are certain fluids that the body can and can't use. Um, and so this is just a bit of an offshoot, good information for clients and yourselves if you don't already know. Um, but clear water is the best drink to have. Um, it, you can add fruit and things to it, but squash, fruit squashes aren't the best thing to add to it. As soon as we add something to our water, our body can't use it as water in the same way. So um, there, we'll be able to extract some water from it. So like fruit juices, there'll be some water in there, you know, it's been squeezed from an orange. There'll be some water in that orange juice, but also a lot of sugar and other things. So your best thing to drink is just plain water. A slice of lemon in it won't affect that at all. There are some drinks, however, that make us increase our urine production. So um, caffeine and alcohol are diuretics. So where we produce that antidiuretic, so alcohol and caffeine will make you produce more urine. So it will just go straight through your body. It can't be used. So you have a pint of beer and it's out of you within five minutes. If you drink a glass of water, you'd find that you wouldn't need to release that for a lot longer because the body's using it. And because the beer goes straight through you, it's obviously going to take water from your body with it when it produces that urine. So that's where we get that dehydrated feeling from drinking too much caffeine or alcohol. So urinary system is an excretory system, but it's also responsible for keeping fluid levels in the body stable. Now, there's another way that um, our body can be an excretory system, and that's through sweating. Um, so that might be something that's referenced when you're talking about excretory systems, and so is a little linked to the urinary system. Obviously, we sweat as a form of temperature control. And so um, water and salts and waste products, the same as what's in your urine, can exit the body via the sweat, via your sweat. 
Now, this is going to have an implication on the fluid levels. So if it's a really hot day, um, or we're doing a lot of exercise and we're sweating a lot, you've got to think about, it's not just water that you're losing through your urine production, but you're losing excess water through sweat. So that's going to put your fluid levels under more stress. And so you're probably going to be, if you're not drinking enough water to replenish that, producing more of that ADH. And so your urine is going to become more concentrated as a result. So the amount we sweat can have an effect on our fluid levels, which will then have an effect on the urinary system. So sweat and urine, different and different systems really, but the fact that we sweat can have an effect, a direct effect on our urinary system because our urinary system is responsible for fluid levels. So lastly, how is our, how do our treatments affect this system and how is this system affected by our treatments? So firstly, we always talk about this stress relief. So stress will affect every organ in your body and that includes your urinary system. So it could be that your immune system is slightly compromised as a result of stress and so that could lead to more frequent or um, more regular urine infections. So just the fact that we are helping to de-stress the client will enable everything in their body to function more effectively, including the urinary system. So it's perhaps not your first system you think of with stress, um, but certainly it has an impact or stress has an impact on that system. And so treating your clients, aiding the relaxation process, um, will help with stress relief and have um, a positive effect on that system generally. But at the end of our treatments, we always tell our clients to drink plenty of water. So we hear this constantly. Drink plenty of water after your treatment. Every therapist you've ever had a treatment with will have told you to drink water. So clearly we do have a bit of an impact because water eventually is going to get to this system above all other systems. So when we provide a treatment, we take the body through a massive detoxification process. And I think I talked about this in another lesson where therapists are very good at telling you to drink plenty of water, but not really telling you why. So we hear this and we're like, oh yeah, I need to drink water, but you don't really understand why. Now we're seeing that water is going to flush those toxins out of the body. So all that waste that is generated um, through cellular metabolism is going to be flushed out. So the more water we put into our body, the more we can produce urine, which means the more we can get rid of, rid of waste, which is going to effectively detoxify the body. And that's so linked to our treatments and our aftercare. We also say to the client that they might feel they need to visit the toilet more often. Um, the process of having the treatment is going to put that body into a detox state. And so the body's naturally going to want to um, produce more urine um, and will produce more urine. So we need to drink the water to enable that production, but also drink the water to replenish. Um, if you've ever had say 60 minute body massage, you get up off the couch, the first thing you need to do is go to the toilet. Um, and that's because it's been an hour and you haven't been, but also because everything in the body has now gone into detox mode. And so it's produced more urine from everything that you had in your body. So straight away that detox process happens. So if you tell your client to drink plenty of water and then tell them why, I mean, I think I've said this before, who doesn't love a detox? So it's great to tell your clients to drink water, fab advice. But if you follow it up with, because your body's going to go through a massive detox and by drinking the water, you're going to enable the body to get rid of more of those toxins. I can guarantee every client is going to be downing three liters of water that day because who doesn't love a detox? Not many people love the water, but they love the detox. So really good to explain to clients why you're giving that advice. So nice, simple system. I'm going to just recap over. So four main structures in the urinary system. We've got the kidneys, of which we have two. 
they sit at waistline level um, either side of the spine. Bean shape structures. Leading from the kidneys, we have two ureters, so one from each kidney, which is just a transportation system. It's a tube that connects the kidney down to the bladder. So one bladder, our bladder is our storage unit. And then we have a urethra that leads off from the bladder to exit the body. Remember, shorter in a female and longer in a male. So the process that those structures go through. So first of all, the renal arteries are bringing the blood to the kidneys. And that blood is gonna find itself in the nephron. And this is where filtration, so the first process, filtration is gonna happen. So everything that the blood is holding gets deposited, filtered into the nephron, all the good stuff and all the waste. And then the nephron's going to sort of sort through that. Go, yeah, that's waste. Yeah, we'll keep that. We'll keep that. Oh, but here's some good stuff. And so now reabsorption, the second process, reabsorption is going to happen. So the good things, the vitamins, the minerals, the glycogen for energy and some water, particularly if fluid levels were low, is going to be reabsorbed back into the blood and that's going to go off to the body. And now the nephron is left with all the waste and some water. More water if we've been really hydrated, less water if we've had to reabsorb most of that back in. So the good stuff goes off via the renal vein out of the uh, kidney and away. And now what's left in that nephron produces urine. So production is your third function. So the kidneys have now produced the urine and that will travel down the ureters to the bladder where it is stored. And then your final function is excretion. So as and when we're ready, we are able to release that urine along with all the weight. Well, urine is the waste and the water out of the body. So filtration, reabsorption, production and excretion. Really simple process, but we need to be aware that fluid levels change in the body. So if there's plenty of fluid, when all of that gets filtered into the nephron, most of that water will stay. And then we're gonna have big wheeze and they're gonna be nice and clear um, and great. But there'll be times where we're dehydrated, where we haven't been drinking enough, or we've been drinking the wrong things. And so um, the brain is alerted that the fluid levels are low. And so the last thing we want to be doing is producing massive amounts of urine. It doesn't make sense. We need that water. So that ADH, the antidiuretic hormone that's produced in the brain, tells the kidneys that when that filtration process happens and the reabsorption then happens not to reabsorb, or no, to reabsorb more water. So the water stays in the blood and goes off to the body and what's left in the nephron is much more concentrated, not very much water at all. So that's then going to ensure that the fluid stays in the body and doesn't exit. It's going to give us fluid balance. But it's going to result in more concentrated and less produced urine. Another factor that will affect urine production will be sweat. So the more sweat we produce, that's water exiting the body. And so if we're not replenishing that water, that's again going to have an effect on the fluid balance and then urine production will be slowed. And remember sweat is temperature regulation. So effect on our treatments, stress relief is just going to be Fantastic, um, but every body system, including the urinary system, um, it is a system that is, or in some people can be really affected by um, constant infections. And so boosting um, the immune system just generally will have an impact. Um, but also detoxification. So our treatments are detoxifying. They will initiate the urinary system to function more. Um, and so, the body will get rid of the waste much more effectively. And that's why our advice is to drink the water to aid that process. So nice, simple system. 
um, that obviously links as an excretory system to the digestive system, which we've looked at prior.